Ladies and gentlemen of the media, welcome to the Orlando Pirates uh, press conference ahead of our NetBank Cup Plus 16 match against the uh, Maruma Gallants. We are joined by the uh, Orlando Pirates co coach, uh, Coach uh, Fatu Davids. Welcome, sir. Uh, coach, just uh, if you can just give us our, our the preparations going like having coming back from a, a disappointment this weekend, how do we, how, how are you working on refocusing? Um, the the players onto this imp important uh, matchup against Maruma Gallants in the Nepal Cup. Good morning, uh, colleagues, many, um, members of the media. Um, always uh, disappointing when you come off a, a defeat, and on top of that, not the first defeat, uh, the second defeat this season in relation to the Soweto derby. Um, it was very important to to reset the thinking, um, to not um, lay too much in the disappointment of the derby, but immediately look forward. And what is facing us is a team in form, uh, Marumo Gallants, uh, a good footballing team, uh, a team that you have to respect uh, on all fronts, um, to refocus, to re-energize, to, to get the, the thinking of the players clear just in relation to what task lay ahead and uh, the, the one goal, of course, to, to progress to the next round. Okay, uh, we'll start with the, just a note. We have uh, uh, we have members of the media that are at the training venue for Lando Pires, as well as those that are on the Zoom platform. So we'll be interchanging in between both uh, uh, in terms of questions. So we'll start with uh, Timba Shavalala that is uh, joined us here at the at training. Coach, um, I, I just wanted to find out from you, Coach, uh, coming from a, 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 a match like that, like the Soweto I'm just going to put it in, in a township lane um, and say the way in this group that one game that we're not support the brought. How then do you prepare your, your players going ahead into a Marumo Island that is able to squeeze for a result even when they are supposed to lose. I mean, I'm sure you're watching the mm -hmm. last day. How do you then get your players to a level where they can say, now we are done with the sort of that we brought it, but we're going into a Maroon mm -hmm. that is very tricky, as rightly well said. It's um, an extremely important point what you say that maybe a game we should have, uh, have won or should not have lost. Um, and it's on two fronts. We, uh, we've got to be bolding and talking, when you're talking about the process uh, and what we're trying to bold and the playing style uh, we're trying to instill in the players, follow the process, uh, take steps, improve as a team, uh, become stronger as a unit with the ball, without the ball. Uh, so the one front is the process. The other front is the results how to and the results is also related to the building the mentality of the players being ruthless uh, in certain situations being ruthless in relation to some matches that you might not play your best but still get the result still scrap through uh, we have a certain identity in relation to we always want to play in a certain way uh, but sometimes uh, um, it's not about throwing those principles away but sometimes you've got to grind to get the result uh, how the match plays out, what the opponent is uh, putting in front of you, where they're becoming more physical uh, than you. Uh, now, the idea of wanting to play in a certain way, but not run the ball into the net. Uh, sometimes you've got to score uh, goals that are, are from outside the box. Sometimes you've got to take responsibility in relation to shots. Uh, um, sometimes you've got to pass to the teammate that's in a, in a better position. So the, these decision-making elements are part of it, but this ruthless mentality um, to win matches. There are, are, are matches we see other teams uh, that are coming back from the break, four wins in a row, but not playing uh, well at all. But that is the mentality shift uh, that those teams have. And that is what we, we're trying to, to build on, on different levels. Uh, the one front is the process, what we're trying to build, not only for now, but for the future, but at the same time, trying to, to, to get results within that process. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ostandi. Good morning to you. Good morning, coach. Uh, good morning to all my colleagues, both online and uh, live there at the, at the venue. 
uh, a coach, did you think it's, it, is it a bit easier for you to to prepare for a side that, you know, you can uh, easily access their tapes? You know, I mean, the Marumo Galens, they're playing the top division with you guys. Is it much more easier to prepare against them than Matai Tai somewhere down in the Eastern Cape? And secondly, coach, I've, I've observed over the last couple of weeks, uh, uh, Teminko Siloch has not been finishing football matches. What is the reason there? Is it fitness? Is it is it is it doing is it not doing what you guys want from him? Why exactly is Lodge not finishing uh, games uh, over the last couple of weeks? Thank you. Yeah, um, Lodge uh, did finish the last match. Um, you, you just got to look into uh, December, the December period where we had uh, eight matches with two days between. We we uh, were in that period where that was the period where Lodge came back from his uh, operation on his shoulder. Um, there was a uh, big discussion in relation to his uh, minimal standards and is he ready to play. And uh, with two matches every every uh, day, um, there were no friendly matches. So you, you pass your minimal standards, you're ready now to, to start playing competitive matches. So ideally, you'd want him to play at least 45 minutes uh, before you start integrating him into the squad. And we had that game where it was um, Amazulu, uh, we went slightly ahead of schedule where we put him in the last 10 minutes okay he's not uh, going to be able to play a friendly match there are no friendly matches scheduled within that time so we took the risk in in bringing him in uh, slightly too early in december um but it paid off uh, within that 10 minutes he created four clear-cut opportunities could have scored himself uh, right at the death um uh, so the huge impact that already he made within the team uh, and then playing the uh Coming back, having then a four-week preparation time, not your normal six-week preparation time, what is uh, normal for, for pre-season. Um, and then being thrown in 90 minutes, 90 minutes, 90 minutes. There were some matches where we uh, um, took him off early in the last 10 minutes against Golden Arrows. Uh, uh, um, uh, we arrested him for that for that moment. And, uh, of course, you saw with the, the Cape the Cape Town City match, we had a, a slight hamstring uh, niggle. So that uh, when there is a muscle injury, uh, uh, that is certainly the, the body indicating, hey, that the load is, is a little bit too much. So we have to be, be clear in how we handle him. We have this uh, before our calf match uh, leopards, we have this program of uh, three weeks, uh, 21 days, uh, seven matches. So every three days a match. Uh, uh, so we have to be clear in relation to how we manage not only him, but the entire squad um, is not yet. If you look at the data in relation to uh, last season, in relation to the season before, uh, certain KPIs uh, is not yet reaching that level, but it will come with time. Uh, we have to support not only him, but the entire group and manage the group well, that you get the best uh, team on the pitch uh, at all times, not necessarily the best players on the pitch. And oh, sorry. Is the Leicester Cup your only realistic chance of winning a trophy? No, no. Locally. Oh, if if you say locally, because we have the we have the three competitions that we we heavily involved in the CAF uh, Confederations Cup, uh, playing Leopards on on Sunday. Um, the Nedbank Cup, of course, uh, is the is the next priority. So, for us in our the way we prepare matches is the next match is the most important match. So um, it has been unfortunate that uh, you win four matches in a row and it's not four league matches in a row. Uh, so you win a, a Nedbank Cup, you beat Amazulu, you play the next match, uh, uh, you beat a Sahura at home, and then the next match is a league match, uh, you, you draw. So uh, that consistency uh, is what we've got to try to create, not only win four matches in a row, but uh, extend that to seven matches, eight matches, nine matches in a row. And then uh, of that nine matches, maybe three of them will be a, a, a league a league encounter. So you get your three wins in a row. Uh, you know, in the PSL, if you if you win three matches in a row, immediately uh, you jump teams, you 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 uh, leapfrog teams that are, are the, the points difference are so close. So that is what we, we, we're trying to do, uh, juggle the competitions, but... Uh, take it uh, in a way that the next match is the most important match. And every match remaining for the rest of the season, whether it's league, whether it's net bank, whether, whether it's CAF, uh, we play to win.
Uh, Coach, I, I don't want to sort of beat on the same old drum, but uh, just with Gabardino Mahango, uh, from a coaching point of view, what does he need to do to to get back into the starting eleven? Is it more about the game model and, and how you want to play, or, or what 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 does he have to show? No, I I, I don't think it's it's fair to talk about uh, Gabardino Mahango again uh, uh, in relation to our strikers, and you talk about Radio Pani Mabasa, uh, Gabardino Mahango. Jukamanja, Lepasa, and, and Pepper. Um, at the moment, uh, Pepper has scored in the last match, and uh, you know it's it's, it's healthy competition. Uh, Lepasa is whenever he's come on, he's done well. Uh, Jukamanja, in the last second of the of the derby, should have scored uh, uh, the goal uh, in that moment. Uh, Gabardino Mahango, Mabasa, Radio Pani are working extremely hard uh, to push, uh, get themselves not only into the team but into the starting lineup. Uh, and like I said last week, it's, it's us coaches uh, to try to find a way. Uh, now suddenly where we have six strikers available, uh, is, it a, is it a moment to, to change to, to play two strikers and have four? four out? The, those are the things we are trying to, 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 to work on, um, to find which is the best chemistry in relation to uh, two strikers. What type of uh, strikers do you want? Mobile strikers, one that can hold up, one that can uh, is more mobile, uh, one that is dropping uh, into the, the 10 pockets and, and dribbling, one that has shots from distance. Uh, so that is the, the chemistry we, we, we're trying to formulate in relation to where is our team uh, strong in which departments, which uh, uh, that will not uh, affect the balance of the team. So. So, so those are the details we are we are trying to look at to get uh, uh, to to solve this uh, goal scoring problem. Morning, everyone. Uh, coach, what have you made of your opponents under the leadership of uh, Dan Malisela? What do you expect from them? Thank you. Yeah, a, a typical uh, uh, transformation. Uh, from the way Marumo Gallants, they had, the, I think they had the players uh, that suits the coach, and Londlo, Ngema, uh, Miguel Tim. Just if you talk about the, the three in the midfield, uh, being able to rotate, being able to to, to pass the ball and move, a fantastic rotation within that uh, midfield, uh, deep runs uh, from the midfield area. Uh, they're on a fantastic uh, run, and, and they have got a clear playing identity. It's uh, something that resonates with us as well. Um, with slight uh, differences in relation to our intensity we play it and, and their intensity we play it, the pace, the speed. Um, but a fantastic job what he's done so far and you can only uh, uh, admire uh, and see a coach's personality, whichever team a coach comes through uh, within the team. And we know we're going to face a, a, a tough opponent. It's not a team that uh, uh, really has too much shots on goal. Uh, again, uh, um, for them, so uh, they they prefer possession and creating the perfect opportunity. So not a lot of uh, shots against you. Maybe we we will face. Uh, that has been one of our strong points: not uh, receiving too many shots on target uh, from the opponent. So uh, with Marumo Gallants as well, uh, with their possession-based style, uh, it's about us how we can implement our style, um, knowing their weaknesses as well. Uh, but a compliment to. To, to their form and, and their coach, what he's done so far. Um, coach, um, what are the positives that you take? Yes, sir. He's a close player, so I'll take a moment. Back to Amaru from the Daily Sun newspaper. Yeah, um, what are the positives that you take um, from the Derby and going into this contest? Yeah, the, the positives uh, in a match where you've, you've lost. Um, again, in, in the last 10 minutes, uh, conceding a set piece. Again, one area that we're quite strong at. It's just, uh, if you go into the details of the set piece, it's just in, in relation to the zone. And one player just stepping out of the zone and just opening up that corridor for Mato. Uh, there are lots of positives. Uh, uh, the first uh, 15 minutes, uh, not the best in relation to our ball progression beyond their block in, in midfield. Um, compliment to them, of course, they had the full week to prepare exactly how uh, to stop our build up. Um, but after the 15 minutes, uh, just uh, slight adjustments within our um, build up strategy, we were able to come through. We were able to then uh, exert ourselves uh, uh, 
on Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, they were then on the back foot. They were then uh, um, trying to hold on. And I think for the rest of the game as well, uh, if you start the second half the way we did and, and create the opportunities the way we did, um, again, in relation to my first point, uh, holding that ruthlessness, holding that uh, winning mentality has to be the, 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 the main point that we have to work on, the main point that we have to turn these draws uh, into, into wins. Uh, if you take the amount of draws, and I don't think there's a draw that uh, we should not have won uh, in relation to the stats, in relation to the opportunities scored, uh, created, shots on target, shots against, and in relation to our dominance, our overall uh, dominance of, of the teams we've played. So um, not only Kaiser Chiefs, uh, um, but any other team that we've played, and it was no different with Kaiser Chiefs um, in relation to our expected goals. We were way above. Um, so those are a lot of positives we can take, but one, one thing, and in relation to my first point I mentioned, change the mentality, change the ruthlessness, uh, change this uh, winning uh, mentality, not only um, have the process in mind, but uh, um, create this winning mentality that you're able to, to uh, score goals and then manage uh, games better. <laughs> Coach, I'm just going to I'm just going to go back to what you said. It's unfair to talk about. I mean, you you're probably right now in the PSL, the only team with the best on-form strikers. I can talk to your radio band and seeing him on the BBC. I can talk about Mahango seeing him on the Akon. I mean, we're still talking to him about him with our international colleagues. I mean, if you can look at Mabasa, we know that whenever he comes in. He can give you a goal, although he has been um, troubled by injuries at times. I mean, this quite a, the Barca is just coming back, will understand his point. But I know as much as you don't want to talk about Mahango, what more must he do or must his teacher do? Because he's got the answers to your questions that we've been asking as the community, football people, within the, the, the conversations that we create. What more must Gabba, Gabba do to get a starting bet or even bench and an, or a sub into an under pirates and what about other, what is it that Ebra is giving you different from Mahango, the Basa, Mabasa, you know, all of the other strikers? Yeah, like I said, it's, a, it's about us uh, trying to find uh, um, the right possibility to play perhaps with two strikers. Uh, in relation to, to team selection, there are various uh, uh, um, aspects you look at. First and foremost, number one, uh, are you coming to training? Are you punctual in relation to being at training and not uh, having disciplinary issues that takes you out of selection? Number one, tick, box, tick, box, tick. Uh, now it's in relation to your performance on training, your performance on uh, 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 how you exert yourself on training. Look, we look at uh, how you're performing on training. Uh, and then uh, trying to find the right uh, uh, balance in relation to the lineup. Uh, and coming, coming back to my first point again, that is about us finding the right uh, possibilities now that suddenly we have. In the first round, we did not have. Gabadino Mahango was not available. Mabasa was struggling with injuries. He had a, a run of five games uh, in a situation. Uh, Lepasa was not available. Um, Pepra uh, was adapting to uh, the South African game in relation to the physicality, in relation to our playing style. Uh, Radio Pani, first season in the PSL, um, integrating him in, in certain matches and seeing the, the huge potential that he has. Um, now um, taking a step back, still training with us, still uh, improving, still uh, in all our training sessions, fighting for a place, uh, and then playing minutes when he's not in the squad and scoring already 17 goals uh, in the DDC. So each each player has their role to play. And it's about us finding that that moment, that uh, chemistry within the lineup, whether it's with two strikers, whether it's with one striker and three number 10s uh, or three players running beyond the striker. But we need uh, uh, not only our strikers, uh, we need all our players to be able to chip in. Like I said last week, uh, we have uh, our top goal scorer at the moment, Shandu, uh, with six goals in all competitions. Um, Hato contributing on, on the other side. Um, Pepper, who scored now in the last match as well, also on six goals. Uh, uh, you know, it's about finding that that moment for for us to think about. Perhaps two strikers is the way, 
uh, to solve this or to find the, the right uh, possibility for uh, the player that's going to lead the line uh, to bring the best out of not only him uh, scoring goals, him contributing to the overall team structure and him bringing, uh, bringing the best uh, out of other players playing around him. Good morning, coach. Good morning, colleagues. Uh, coach, thank you very much for being honest. To at least this time, from me, you'll never get any question about Mahango because you've already indicated to us that there are a number of things that are contributing discipline, coming early, coming late. Thank you for that. Coach, don't you think that uh, this net bank cup and position two, because you know what, I, I I'm sure you agree with me. Position one is out of your, your, your reality now as Orlando Pirates. Position number two and net bank could be used as a motivation enough for the players to fight for this because Orlando Pirates is a big batch. So at end of the season, uh, they must be able to point out something that Pirates has collected. Thank you, coach. Yeah, I, did, I said it earlier on in relation to every game being the most important. But uh, if you win all your matches in the in the league, and, and that is what we're aiming for, uh, you, you still have to um, rely on other results. How it is at the moment, uh, Net Bank Cup. You win all the matches in the Net Bank Cup. Uh, you're 100 percent convinced uh, you're going to get the trophy, and that's what we aim for. And in the CAF competition as well, now it's about uh, getting the 10-point mark to qualify for the group stage and then win the remaining matches from there. Uh, you guarantee the, the CAF Confederations Cup uh, trophy. And, and that is what we as Orlando Pirates are, are, are fighting for on all fronts. It's not a situation that we have to put the carrot uh, for the players to say these are the competitions we can win. We know these are the competitions we are going for, a full out. Um, so it's not to... Uh, use it as motivation, it's a given. Uh, we go to win this Net Bank Cup, uh, we play to win the CAF Confederations Cup, and we play to win all our remaining league matches, and, and hopefully it gives us the second spot. Um, good morning, coach. Good morning, everyone. Uh, mm. My name is Inche Pink Nkobane from Highway Radio in Devon. Um, my question, Coach, in terms of goalkeeping, we've seen um, Siamong and Pontane conceding uh, goals and more than three matches. Um, don't you think perhaps um, there is uh, there is a need for a change in the goalkeeping, maybe putting Ofori or Wayne St. Lens? Yeah, uh, it's exactly the same like uh, the, the striker question. Uh, the goalkeeper department as well. Um, Ponche has done extremely well, uh, especially while we're in crisis, uh, not having uh, goalkeepers available, uh, Wayne being injured, uh, not having a preparation time. Um, in the beginning of Fori with his uh, shoulder operation. Um, and now we, we, we're sitting uh, last week. Uh, we were hoping Fori was available for the Cape Town City match, not. Um, then it was the question, of course, of Ori being available, having two training sessions before the derby. Uh, is it too soon? Is it not? Um, but that competition is there. Uh, you have to look at the status of Ofori, how he's, uh, how he's training, how he's looking, uh, how many friendly matches he's had. Uh, he's passed his minimal standards. He's done the, the rehabilitation uh, plan. Um, and now it's competition. Wayne Sandyland's as well available. Um, over the last matches, uh, and all three are competing uh, for that spot. And Ponche at the moment, uh, as you know, has been playing, has been doing consistently well. Uh, if you if you if you take the entire season, uh, how he's performed, uh, it's our strong point. Uh, not not conceding many goals, not conceding many shots against. Uh, so the goalkeeper, of course, has to be um, in the game uh, when you're not seeing the ball for 20, 30 minutes, and then you're called upon uh, to make one big save. So. Uh, that department uh, is now fully fit, uh, all three competing for a place, and we'll make a decision uh, like we always do in every match uh, for the next match. Coach Lorenz, Tony, from the Crispy Times. You had Coach Manda has been talking about the work that is obviously been scheduled for a couple of weeks now. But obviously, with the squad that you have, you 
the team for consistency and the consistency of your starting eleven. Um, how much does that affect you? Um, and how how tempted are you to rotate your squad now with this main tank up thing, then going to the captain, then going back into the league? Obviously, mm-hmm. a lot of players want to leave to play as well. Mm-hmm. So, what's the situation with the technical team and the team team? Yeah, um, I think that that's an important point. Um, you you don't want to change our, our principles and our playing style uh, does not change whether we play three defense line four defense line two strikers one striker um, it does not change uh, in relation to, to to keeping a consistent lineup of course you'd want that uh, um, you know where you build that non-verbal communication between the players i'm coming short i'm making the run in behind uh, i know uh, the player a likes to receive the ball in the pocket player b uh, likes to receive the ball behind the defense line uh, what are the strengths what are the, what are the weaknesses and and building that momentum is is one part um a, a small example in relation to that is uh, and my, my my statement earlier the the next match being the most important match uh, Cape Town City, a match uh, coming up. Uh, Moselle is on three yellow cards. He's been on probably our most consistent midfielder, performing at a really high level. Do you take him out and rest him for the derby, or do you play him, risking that he'll get the third yellow? No, you play him because Cape Town City at that moment is the most important match, and uh, that's what we. That's how we try to approach it. Try to put the best team on the pitch in, in every game. Hopefully, uh, it's a team that you do not have to rotate. But uh, in details, we look at the, uh, the fitness data after every match uh, to see the weekly load of the players, to see um, what they've done previously, how they've trained previously, and are they at injury risk. And then we have to make those decisions in relation to um, can they play this third match in the week or do they start and once the game is settled, do we take them off? Like the Royal Leopard match, we made four consecutive uh, substitutes uh, to rest some players. Um, so those are the, the 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 key decisions that we always have to make. Ideally, you want to play the same lineup, same team, build momentum, go on on a run, and and, and keep it that way. Um, but uh, performance uh, plays a part. Fitness aspect plays a part. Uh, playing so many matches, you can't ignore when a player in the training session is is performing at a high level, and the player performing in his position is not. Uh, immediately, you have to to look and and make the change uh, if needed. So uh, those are all the aspects that you have to look at uh, uh, in relation to managing the squad. We have a big squad, and now that everybody's uh, available except uh, um, Vincent Pule, Marco Bella with a slight uh, injury. Um, to find that balance between keeping consistent sleep but also having a fresh team that is able to perform at a high intensity uh, if you look at the kaiser chiefs game uh, they had a full week to prepare and you look at the fitness uh, you just look at one aspect and you look at our data afterwards yes guys are chiefs uh, you you don't know their their coach was alluding to the soft tissue injuries that players coming on players going off and our players were quite consistent to be able to play at that high intensity for uh, uh, the entire 90 minutes, and that is a credit to the, the, the medical and fitness department to, to have our team uh, prepared. There is a situation, uh, and we had it in December, uh, where you're playing these three matches a week. Uh, but the third match, the fourth match, and the player goes through that uh, um, rhythm of playing the third, fourth, fifth match, uh, their bodies adapt and, and they're able to consistently play at that uh, 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 level. Now it was a period, uh, you saw the leopard, Leopards match the first 20 minutes after our travels to, to Libya. Um, you saw it in the first 15 minutes of Kaiser Chiefs, and hopefully the third match, fourth match, will go through that uh, uh, period and we're able to perform at a consistent level, uh, fitness-wise, for 90 minutes. Hi, Fadlil. Aiden from Kickoff. Um, just going or staying on the Chiefs game, do you think for the modern footballer, but, um, losing a away to Derby hurts the same way as it did in previous years? And also maybe taking into account lockdown and playing matches behind closed doors maybe impacts this. I think uh, there's two fronts on this uh, issue. Um, number one, maybe um, not having the supporters in the stadium uh, is slightly different, you know, than having a, a full stadium. 
So that's one part. And the other part is, um, like you're alluding to, is the social media effect, you know, losing uh, it's, it's the, the new generation player immediately after the game. And we're they waiting for the press conference to, to end. All of them are scrolling through their phones. And uh, I'm sure it's not uh, um, always uh, talking to their loved ones, but uh, scrolling through Twitter, scroll, scrolling through Instagram. Uh, who's insulting me? Did I play well? I felt I played well. What are the media saying? What are the supporters saying? Uh, you can't stop it, uh, but you can only advise uh, our players not to be too busy with uh, social media. Listen to us in relation to the performance because there can be a false sense of uh, bias uh, that is out there. Uh, one player getting the, the brunt of whatever it may be, one bias that is there for one supporter and it just becomes a, a, a big uh, thing uh, where it's absolutely nothing. And those uh, details, we can advise the players, don't be too involved uh, with in uh, social media in relation to your performance, especially don't look at uh, what comments are, are being said out there, uh, rather, in relation to us and our video analysis post-match where we sit with uh, each individual player, where we sit as a group where we analyze what we did well, uh, what we did wrong. And um, uh, let's bold uh, from there and not and not social media. Another question? Coach, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go back to the goalkeepers. I'm from Soweto and I'm big on development. How long will it take for Stolle and Tunsali, especially Tunsali, that I know him from mm. the 13 year old, that they can command the place at Orlando Pirates? Would you prefer losing with the youth that the fans will understand that, okay, these boys are coming up, will understand they'll have flaws one, two, or three? Or is it just a matter of our coaches are not brave enough to have faith on these young boys that? Uh, um, have built their rapport as they grow. Mm. Um, where are we there as, mm. as coaches of Orlando Pirates being Coach Manda and Coach Padlo? Mm. And on the lighter note, Coach, it took um, Marisbeck United to stop Sundowns, to put them on a hold. Have you spoken to Coach David on the other side? Um, what did, what <laughs> recipient did he give you? And what do they say about what they've gone through? <laughs> it was a shock. Uh, yeah, fantastic victory. Um, I, I come back to my my uh, initial statement about process, um, building the team, um, ticking the box in relation to how is the player, how does he handle himself within the group, what uh, is he on time, does he have discipline issues, what what is his uh, whole profile as not only a player, human being, uh, do you see him uh, in that uh, um, regard as a future of the club? So uh, at this moment, you're building not only for the process long term for next season, for the seasons to come, but also getting results now. And that balance is, is uh, important. Uh, but coming back to the, the development of these two goalkeepers, we, we're really blessed to have both of them. Uh, we had a um, Copano at the moment is, is injured. He, he will uh, undergo his four-week rehabilitation plan um, to, to strengthen some deficits to help him in the long term. He has played uh, in the first round more matches than Ayanda. Uh, Ayanda has really shown maturity um, and a huge uh, um, growth in, in the six months uh, working under uh, our, go our new goalkeeper coach. Uh, and he's taken huge steps uh, uh, to to be very close to the to the first team uh, in that regard. Uh, so both of them were, took those steps. Um, Copano, unfortunately, at the moment is injured, uh, but not afraid uh, us as coaches to to give the youth uh, an opportunity and, and play in. And whether it's a Soweto derby, whether it's a game against Sundowns. Uh, um, whether it's CAF Confederations Cup, that's why both of them are registered for CAF as well. Um, uh, both of them taking fantastic steps in relation to their development and are definitely future uh, goalkeepers uh, of Orlando Paris. It's about us finding the right moment. It's about us not throwing them into uh, the deep end where they're not able to handle it. And then you take 
uh, five steps back in terms of their development. It's finding that right moment, that right balance. And at the moment, both of them are uh, what helps uh, in this regard that uh, they are in a similar age group, uh, similar age bracket. Uh, so they are uh, not only competition uh, um, in terms of with Wayne Sandilands, um, Ponchani and Ofori, three experienced goalkeepers that they can learn of every day. They can compete against them, number one, but also they can compete against each other. Also, they can look at, hey, I'm the next one. I'm number um, four. No, I'm number four. Uh, so, so that is fantastic in relation to having them both, both performing extremely well in the in the in the DDC uh, now, uh, and uh, the DDC results have spoken for themselves. And both of them taking steps in their development, and and definitely both of them have a very bright future. Uh, and when the moment comes, uh, you'll see them on the pitch. Uh, that's for sure. Our our goalkeepers. Uh, very experienced uh, uh, and and um, rubbing off that knowledge that they have and you know that's invaluable for them to see how a, a Ghana number one handles himself in this rehabilitation program in his in the training sessions uh, a vice captain in, in the Ghanaian national team Wayne Sandilands uh, his wealth of experience playing in the PSL for so many years and Mponchani as well his experience and uh, his ability uh, is there for these these goalkeepers to take uh, one thing from each of those experienced goalkeepers and develop the, their game on a daily basis to be ready for that opportunity when it comes. Um, ladies and gentlemen of the media, we have come to the conclusion of our press conference. I've given you ample time, gentlemen, we are 10 minutes over. Uh, so uh, thank you once more for your time and participation and to our colleagues on the Zoom platform. Thank you for your time and participation, uh, Coach Kadu. Thank you once more. Thank you. I don't think uh, uh, we will we will defend in a block.